Hey everybody, uh, th this time we will talk about how can you simplify deploying graph connectors with Teams apps. So in the past we talked about what connectors are, right? Basically TLDR to keep it really short, they're a way for you to bring external you know, content from your uh, apps that, that you use at work to Microsoft 365 so that you can use it in experiences such as search, context IQ, but also more and more relevant to everybody every day, pilot, right? So um, 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 they are a way for you to enrich and bring that, in, that info from external apps to Microsoft 365 where everyone is. When you think about what a connector is, a quick recap of, of something that we've uh, talked about in the past too, right? In essence, it's a connector code. So it's basically a piece of code that runs somewhere. It's connected to the source where the content that you want to bring to Microsoft 365 is, whether that's a database, API, local files, whatever, you name it. You write the code, so you connect the code to whatever data repository you've got. Two, at some point, that code will reach out to Microsoft 365, so it doesn't run, and obviously it needs to authenticate. So it also has an intra app reg. So that's the point number two on the slide. And then three, the final step is that the connector code that you write connects to my through the Microsoft Graph to Microsoft 365 and creates a connection, which is a place where it ingests the content that it imports and then also ingests into that the content that it brings from the external so, uh, source. So that is really a graph connector in essence. It, it has these four different blocks, right? It can be as simple as a PowerShell script and as elaborate as a fully fledged cloud app with containers to handle scale and whatever else you want. So that really depends all on your needs, how you want to, like what kind of needs you've got, what is it uh, that you need to handle and how much, um, uh, a content you've got to import and also how often it's going to refresh, right? So uh, you can make it as small and as big as you like. Now, today we want to talk to, to you about the concept of how can you package a, a, a connector as a Teams app to make it easier for admins in your environment to manage and, do, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and deploy it, right? Because if you think about it, a connector is just a piece of code. So, and if you run that code in a cloud, who's going to start it and who's going to like do the initial thing of creating a connection and authenticating that in production. You're not going to press a five in production, right? So ideally there would be some kind of UI, but do you need to build it by yourself? Well, you could, but do you need to? No, you don't because you also have this other ability where you package a connector as a Teams app and that basically means that your, your connector is going to appear in the Teams admin center as an app. Right? And you will see that in action in a bit, right? When it's there, you will get additional option to control whether the connector is enabled or not. And that trigger, you handle that in your code, right? So you deploy the package to TAC. From TAC, you get the option or the admin gets an option to enable, disable it. And that basically sends a trigger to your code, which you handle accordingly. So in other words, if the admin chose to enable the connector in the tenant, you will get a webhook about of that, and you get basically instructions to okay start creating the connection and start the initial ingestions of the items from external source to Microsoft 365. When the admin turns off the connector, that's again signal to you to delete the connection and basically clean everything up. So that's something that you handle in your code, and it's not much, but there's a bit of code you need to add. But the benefit is is that you don't need to build a UI and you don't need to introduce new concept to admins. They can basically use whatever knowledge and skills and experience and locations they already have to manage your, your connector too. So that is really a great way that if you build a connector for your org, you should definitely keep in mind as an option and think about it. Also think about that end-to-end -end experience, not only about how the connector works and how it's going to work ongoing, but also how do you expose it to admins so that they can control and operate it. With that uh, theory part, how about we see it in action? And that is also a cue to Gary, who's going to walk you through the process of building and showing and the different parts of how do you build a connector that is exposed as a Teams app.
Thank you very much, Waldeck. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, yep, so I'm going to go through um, basically a sample uh, project that we have um, that shows how to use Teams Toolkit as well, simplify a lot of the um, elements that Waldeck had had talked about so that you can enable admins to go into the, uh, into the admin center and to basically have this enable and disable toggle approach for for the uh, for the connections and just to show you what that looks like it looks like this it's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world uh, but effectively by configuring uh, your graph connector as a teams app you have this toggle where you can turn the connection on and off and obviously to get that to work there's a number of things that you need so if i go back to code the very first thing that we need is we need our teams app and um, so here we've got an app manifest file so this app manifest file contains the information um, that will enable that button to be rendered so it has information uh, the web application info uh, information and the graph connector notification url um, as well so one thing to note is um, when you're uh, creating a graph connector as a Teams app, you must be using manifest version 1.13 or higher. This is using 1.16, so we're absolutely covered there. So that's just something uh, to uh, note. So I talked about the web application info object. So this refers to a Microsoft Entra app registration, which is used to uh, authenticate the uh, the connector, our code, uh, with, with Microsoft Graph. Um, and uh, the notification URL as well. So this notification URL basically represents the endpoint that when the admin you know, either enables or disables, there's going to be a notification sent to this endpoint um, that will then, your code will run and then handle whether it needs to create or whether it needs to, uh, uh, to, to delete a, a connection or, or update. So um, the way that we can automate all of this is by using Teams Toolkit and using the F5 process in, T in Teams Toolkit. So we can take this um, manifest and we can basically um, go through all of the process to uh, to package the uh, manifest into an app package, upload that into the admin center, create the app registration, start all the different processes um, that, uh, that you would need for this to, to work. So let's take a look at how Teams Toolkit does that. So um, the way that you would start this is you would just press F5, you'd start a debug session. Um, and by clicking F5, it kicks off a, uh, a configuration. So this is a, a VS Code uh, file, and this is a compound configuration, uh, which refers to the debug profile here, exactly the same thing. And um, this essentially starts our Azure function. So our Azure function is going to act as our, our local code logic. Uh, this is going to be our endpoint where there's a request uh, going to come uh, through from, from Microsoft Graph. Um, so it's going to start all, all of those tasks um, and uh, it's going to enable um, the attached process as well. So we're in VS Code, uh, we can uh, put breakpoints in our code um, as, uh, as, as requests come through. We can inspect that uh, using you know, uh, the, the standard tools that, that, that you have. Now, one of the, the next things that happens is once everything's been set up, there's a there's a, a setup task uh, called TTK that runs, and this has subtasks. Uh, so we've got like things like npm install, ensuring files are um, uh, are created, all the things that we need, um, so that when we hit that button or the admin hits the button, um, that uh, everything's in place, the request will be able to be handled, and we'll be able to send uh, requests back. So um, one of our first uh, tasks here is to ensure that a dev tunnel is running. So our endpoint is local um, and because obviously uh, we're interacting with um, a, a cloud service, we need to expose this uh, to the uh, to the internet. So we have a script here, uh, which uses the dev tunnel CLI. And um, what this makes sure is there's a tunnel that is created um, that we can use as our, um, uh, our notification URL. If it doesn't exist, it'll go and create it. And next time we want to run it, it'll just use the same uh, dev tunnel. We won't get a dev tunnel a, a different every single every single time. Um, we've also got a task that runs that ensures some environment files as well. So we've got lots of variables here that we need to keep hold of, like the app registration IDs, uh, secrets, all that those kind of things. Um, so we we have a, a script that just updates um, some default uh, values in that file. 
Uh, we've also got um, Azure I emulator in here as well. So we're using table and queue storage as well. Uh, so we're using queues for handling messages. We've got long running operations here. So we want to make sure that we can retry every so often as well and make sure that it, it's resilient. We also want to store um, some of our data as well that we're actually going to ingest into uh, uh, into Microsoft uh, 365. So we use the Azure I emulator there, um, and that's going to uh, spin up when we uh, when we press F5. Uh, and then the final uh, task in here is um, we've then got a task that's going to execute a provision stage um, in in one of the uh, uh, YAML files that you get in Teams toolkits. This YAML file is a, a project file. And essentially what it's there to do is to automate uh, Microsoft 365 development tasks. Um, so you can add in here things like custom scripts, which we've we've added. So we have a script in here to say, hey, make sure we've got data in our tables that we're going to ingest into uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, so we can just run a, a quick node script there. Um, we've got then utility script, which is quite nice that every time we hit a five, we're going to update the app manifest version. And this is important because if we're um, developing and you want to retry things, um, if you just keep the same version, it, you're going to get conflicts when you try and upload that to the uh, to the admin center so we just handle that every f5 we just simply go in and, and update the uh, the version uh, the next step um so crucial you need a microsoft app uh, microsoft enter app registration um for for your graph connector to 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 work so we have a task in here that will create that registration and then write out a load of the uh, the environment, uh, uh, sorry, the the output variables to our environment variable so that we can reuse these um, across our application. And those environment variable uh, environment files look like this. So we've got lots of information here, like the notification endpoint that's been created from a, a dev tunnel URL, lots of, uh, of the IDs for our app registration, but also secrets as well. Um, so we've got a user file, um, which when Teams Toolkit sees that, uh, it knows that it's got credentials in there. So it decrypts, uh, sorry, encrypts them um, as well, which is uh, which is quite nice. Um, that's where um, the uh, you know the client secret um, that you need on your app registration is is stored. Now, once we've created that app registration, we need to uh, configure it. So the next task um, will update this app registration. Uh, with the contents of this manifest file. Um, and in this manifest file, uh, you, we have permissions. So you need two permissions to create a connection and to actually ingest items. Um, so they need to be on the, uh, so these app only um, uh, permissions. So these need to be on the app registration. And also you need to configure an application uh, ID URI um, as, uh, as, as well. And that goes into the uh, app manifest. So that kind of links the uh, the Teams app to the uh, Microsoft Enter Entra app registration as well. Once all that's done, you know we're doing things in uh, in Microsoft Entra. We actually then need to create the app package as well. So there's a task to take that manifest file, uh, create the app package. Um, and in here, we can see that this is an output version. We've not got any placeholders in here. These are what the actual real values would be. So we get an output of that so we can inspect it. Um, and then our last, uh, sorry, second to last task in here is our Azure function code needs to understand, OK, what are the environment variables uh, that have been generated, the client IDs, client secrets. So we have a task here to to update the local settings.json file, which then our Azure function can use this, use these values at runtime. And then finally, we publish the app package to uh, the Teams admin portal. That essentially uploads the, the app part of, of the graph connector. Um, it doesn't publish it though. So there is a manual task that you need to go in there and just click the, uh, the publish uh, button. But once you've done that, um, once you've done that and the admin then has uh, enabled that uh, that toggle, gone through uh, permissions as well to confirm uh, that, that they're all consented to, the this function here, this notification um, uh, endpoint, uh, will receive a uh, request which will uh, hand, you know, be responsible for enabling or disabling the uh, the connection. And what this does is it returns a 202 accepted as soon as it's hit. There's a a, a 
if you don't get a reply or you don't reply in 30 seconds, um, then, you know, the retries uh, that, that happen can can take a lot longer. So we we issue the uh, return the 202 straight away. And we have um, a bit of an example here of the information that comes in the request body. So important things to state here, are uh, we have a state value, a connector's ticket value, and a validation token as uh, as well. So this is on the incoming uh, incoming request. Um, so this is what this code does. So once we've sent the uh, 202, we've got some code that's going to validate the authentic authenticity of the incoming uh, notification. So make sure it's a real one. And then it's going to create a, a message that we're going to put on a queue to either create or disable this connection. Um, and then we're going to handle um, uh, so we're going to add that to the queue and then we're going to basically issue a request to create the, uh, the connection. So quickly to go through the validation of the token. So we actually validate this against uh, Microsoft Entra as well, just to make sure, yes, this is correct and we should be processing this. Uh, we then create this message. So this is a message that we've just created in uh, in our application. But the most important thing here is that we've actually got the connector ticket and the connector ID because we need to send the connector ticket that we receive uh, in the incoming request back um, in the request uh, to Microsoft Graph to say, yes, I want you to create a connection. Um, and then we transform this into a base64 string and add it to the queue. Once the message is added to the queue, uh, we have a function here that is, is executed. And then we can say, OK, is it create? Is it delete? And then go down the appropriate uh, logic. For this, we want to do a create. And we have a function here which uh, create, uh, sends a request to Microsoft Graph to create the connection. And the important thing here is the connector ticket, like I mentioned. So you send the connector ticket that came in uh, in the incoming request. Um, back out essentially in the in a graph connectors uh, ticket header uh, which will create the connection once you've got the connection then you can create the schema then you can actually start to ingest data and that's where the, the next step of the logic in this app comes but hopefully you can see there's a lot of moving parts in this and teams toolkit basically makes this a much simpler way of uh, developing uh, your graph connectors and having that simplified Teams uh, admin center experience as well. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back. Perfect. So as we are over time, let me do a quick recap, share a few links, and then we'll be over to the next uh, person in, in, in queue, right? So what you've just seen is how you package a gra graph connector as a Teams app. And you've seen that, yes, there are a few things you need to take into account. But you also seen that Teams Toolkit allows you to automate all of that. So you, all you need to do is to press F5 and it just works. So with that, we will share the links to the additional docs on this, samples, so that you can explore it on your own. And if there is anything, do reach out to us. Mm -hmm.